Welcome back. Probably the last episode I'm gonna do before bed. Let's see here, we just... we just finished Stowaway. And, uh, we got some social media updates, I think. Battery issues? Sorry to be a grump. What's going on with our battery tech? I had my battery replaced just a couple of years ago, and it's already constantly in need of recharging. I can't spend half my life in sleep mode. Is this really what we're coming to? This is exactly what we're coming to. Battery ingredients are rare. We can't scavenge further without building outposts. Human Herman shut down the mine project. What did everyone expect? You should learn to live with less. Sleep mode is a great time to meditate and think about our place in the universe. Do you really need to be active all the time? Let's not start a panic about a minor technical issue. Mistakes happen, Stolo. Please talk to Pellegrino or Neith about getting a replacement, which I'm sure will work a lot better. Yeah, they're, uh... They're gonna trap themselves in an ecosystem bubble where they run out of materials. Right, well... Since we've done that both triangle puzzles, we can start doing the normal puzzle now. What's this question mark though? A terminal? Probably. Oh, there's two question marks in this direction. Let's go check those first, actually. Oh, this one's a terminal. How it was before. From JG Nakalim's Akaba to Antarctica. Moments of transition and revelation. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to give up on me pronouncing any of this stuff correctly, to be honest. My great-grandmother lived to be 108 years old, retaining her sharpness of mind to her last day. A couple of months before she died, I interviewed her for my podcast. At the end, I asked her the same question I asked every guest. What is something you wish everyone understood? She thought about it for a while, then she said, How it was before. She tried to explain how much time she spent every single day on utterly mind-numbing activities, like hauling water from the well, and how radically everything changed when their era area was finally connected to the electrical grid. Before, there is no time to live, she said. No time to be free. Only work, work, work. I countered by saying that there didn't seem to be much time to live now either, but she laughed derisively. I had no idea what work really meant, she said. Young people were weak and feckless, and that's why we let corporations exploit us. Slightly unnerved by her harshness, I asked her if she missed anything about that time. Corruption, old photos, corruption, our village seemed idyllic to me, but my grandmother quashed any romantic notions I might have had. The past is bad, she said with some finality. Let it be. Yeah, this kind of ties in with what we were just reading on social media about the, uh, the battery issues. Miranda says, so many thousands of generations of suffering, even a single life full of tragedy seems outrageous and acceptable to me. Athena says, that's why we have to make it have meaning. Yep. Return to monk. <laughs> oh, the memes. From the Book of Annotated Internet Comments by Eustathius. I just think people are dumb. Like relentlessly bleeping stupid. Absolute bleeping morons. Human history is a bleeping clown show from beginning to end. The average person, just a slobbering buffoon bumbling through life like a drunk gorilla in a bleeping china shop, breaking stuff left and right, throwing bleep at the walls, and never understanding a single bleeping thing that happens. I mean, just look at this bleeping software putting asterisks of where swear words would be. People are afraid of bleeping words like they have magic powers, but the real bleep is that bleeping ruining their lives? That's fine. Because they're too bleeping dumb to do something about it. Return to monkey? Brother, we never bleeping left. A curious inversion. The return to the mythical state of Monkey is usually portrayed as a material return to earlier stages of development, but here the author instead portrays it as a mental state that has never been surmounted. Miranda says, I would like to meet Uncle Eustathius one day. He sounds like someone who is always curious about everything. Then failed to look the next comment. Founding 8. From Hypatheus Journals Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem. Day 421. The first new human arrived today. Calls himself Arkady, after Chernes uh, Chernyshevsky. Did I finally say that right? <laughs> Spirits are still dampened by the loss of Yemo, but everyone is making an effort. I feel a little sorry for him. He's still so curious, jumping at shadows and staring up at the sky at night, just like I used to do. 
And here we are, a bunch of grouchy old humans that have seen it all and are weary and tired and sad. I wonder what he makes of it all. But, be that as it may, we're making good progress on a new living area, although Arkady will have to use Yemo's old headquarters. Old quarters for the next few year next few weeks. <laughs> wow, really misreading these. I should go to bed soon after this. Alright, the other question mark is way off in that direction apparently. Just looking around, just in case. But I think we found all the secrets, other than the human artifacts. On my last return to New Jerusalem, I perused the latest artistic offerings and found myself deeply disappointed. There is nothing more despicable to me than an artist who pursues the appearance of morality. Moral art is trash, garbage, not even good enough to be used as wallpaper. If art is a religion, then morality is for those who want to be seen in church. True art is for those who believe. Art must be ecstatic. A work of revelation, created in pursuit of the truth, no matter where it leads. An artist must be an agent of chaos in times of order. And an agent of order in times of chaos. Interesting perspective. Oh, the particles are throwing me off a little bit there. Also, oh, that pattern is still holding, I suppose. Alright. Puzzle number one. What are you called? Mountaineer. Right, this is our introduction to this stuff, I suppose. <laughs> it makes you pick a side. Are you aiming at something, or is this someone just replaced in the level without something connecting to it? Interesting. We. Oh. Okay. So apparently it was created by this, but this was just not playing the proper animation for it. Interesting. Excuse me? There's a connector in here somewhere? Where though? And how did I miss it? Treating this like a jammer for some reason. <laughs> oh! Okay, well, that simplifies things. There we go. <laughs> I could 
stayed up here to do all this. That's okay, though. <laughs> Why does it let me place it there if it won't stay there? There we go. Wait, what? Oh! I placed it too high! Okay. There we go. I've known Byron since day one. I was the first to be born with upgrades from the original Soma design, and he was the first to volunteer to upgrade his existing body. Yeah, he was a big supporter of upgrades. Deliberate evolution, he called it. Athena and Cornelius were very kind to me, and so was Byron, but he also made fun of me. And oddly enough, that made me feel more like an equal than anything the others said. Three, upward migration. Because we already did two in the previous episode. Much to the length of my episode's dismay. Upward migration, huh? Not that upward. There's... there's one. There... oh, there's some. Hmm... Oh, another connector, huh? Interesting. So what's this over here for? Is there another connector or something? Or do I just need to move it over to there somehow? I don't see how the signal would reach, though. Try it. Alright. Oh, I bet I need to put that one up in that corner. Maybe that'll work. Okay. It's worth a try. Actually, to give this the best shot of working, I should put it closer here. There we go. Okay, what's the problem here? Yeah, see, this is what I was afraid of. Oh, I didn't see that one. Okay. Forgot about it. There we go. Gotta really look around in these puzzles. Listening to Miranda talk about beauty made me think. Okay, this might be super weird and kind of pretentious, but I, I honestly mean it. What is beauty? Like, where does it exist? Is it just in our minds? Or is there some objective component? Something quantifiable? I always thought it was just perception. But if I understand her correctly, Miranda sees beauty as a property of the universe itself. I think you misunderstood her. I 
I suppose this one is the most accurate. This is also accurate. Our options are beauty is an objective property that we can perceive. Beauty exists solely in our minds. Beauty exists in the interaction between the self and the world. I have no idea. Uh, let's pick this one. Interesting. So the more humans there are, the more we spread across the world, the more beauty there is. But then doesn't it follow that it's our duty as a species to grow? To make the universe more beautiful? So that's really not how I expected that remark to be interpreted at all. And I also don't necessarily agree with these choices. <laughs> there's, there's no nuance in these conversations, and it's really driving me up the wall. Literally, because that's what these puzzles have us doing, is driving ourselves up the wall. <laughs> Our options are, yes, imagine sentience spreading across the galaxy, and as it does, the cosmos coming alive with beauty. Or, we must survive, yes, but not grow. Ah. Well, I don't like either of these options. I mean, obviously, this one is nice in theory, but there's so much to consider about it first. And the game is not letting us explain any nuance. That's... That's a really powerful image. Beauty flowering in the universe as intelligence spreads. Thank you. I hope you're right. I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I hope it's true. Okay, this may sound like a robot joke, but I love heavy metal, especially the more melodic kind. It's big, it's epic, it's full of emotion. You can really get lost in it. All right. Onward to puzzle four. Puzzle number four, lateral thinking. Look all around, just in case. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of uh, one of the Portal 2 co-op courses. Interesting. <laughs> well, seems like we mainly need to get the box out of there. Shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> oh, wait. Better be another connect in there, because if not, then I'm not sure what we're doing here. How is this going to work? Oopsie. <laughs> I was wondering what would happen there. We is <laughs> trying to put me inside of that. All right. Uh, no, but let's really think about this now. I guess we can take the box with us. We don't need it on the button anymore. The question is, how is that going to help? Oopsie. Oh, right. This will work. Probably. Deception! <laughs> I remember that puzzle from the first game. Whee! There we go. Problem solved. <laughs> Did it.
for the first time, I synthesized life. It was just a unicellular cyanobacterium, but the sheer complexity of even such a simple organism is breathtaking. Creating it from pure energy, I was filled with a sense of awe and majesty. A, a sense that what I was doing was sacred. It made me think about the enormous power of life. Two and a half billion years ago, these simple beings terraformed the entire planet, creating the oxygen that underlies the Earth's incredible biodiversity, wiping out thousands of other species, but making the future possible. Lame God. So many questions to answer. Five. Cycling. <laughs> Excuse me, what did I just do there? <laughs> Oh, that is so funny to me for some reason. <laughs> what kind of Looney Tunes of logic is this? <laughs> oh, wow. Whee! Uh, where is our emitter? I miss where it is. Is it in here? Well, that wouldn't make sense. A tree is growing through the wall. Or maybe that's just vines. What's in there? Uh, yeah, I kind of forgot where the emitter was. We. Oh, there it is. Interesting. Okay. There we go. That works. Right, now what next? Hmm. Guess we could also get it through here. Oh, they tricked us. They tricked us! <laughs> Maybe they didn't trick us. Hmm. What do I need that for? Oh! I know what we need that for. There we go. Problem solved! Oh, this is how we get out of here. Puzzle number six. Other side. Where are the gravity balls at? Oh, 
Oh, there it is. Okay. I wonder... Right, yeah. I need to put it through the hole first. <laughs> First of all, what happens if I just do this? Oh, the barrier stops it. Interesting. No guy to help us align it with the hole. That's interesting. Okay, well. How we find out what happens? Oh, <laughs> we can go through the holes now. Oh, yes. Does that mean we can take the driller through the hole, though? Oh, now it aligns the hole with that. Okay, so the gravity won't align with the hole, but the hole will align with the gravity. <laughs> Can't take driller through its own hole? Yeah, right, we just did it. So that's just an arbitrary limitation. So, and somebody else was playing. They had a a cube on a on a button that was on the other side of the hole, and uh, the driller had a barrier in the way, like this. The cube on the button was disabling the barrier, and it let you take the cube off the button through the hole, which disable which enabled the barrier and stopped the driller. So, like, if you actually tried to do that in this game's lore, you would get your arms chopped off because, uh, you'd be reaching through the hole as the cube lifts it off of the button. But it lets you do it. But it doesn't let you take the driller through its own hole, unless you use the gravity to do it. So, uh, yeah, the logic in this game is kinda arbitrary. <laughs> Onward. Oh, it wants me to go to the ring, right? So seven and eight are in this direction. Oh, animal. It's kind of fox or something. Oh, beautiful area. I don't think I've seen this before. Have I walked over this at some point? Oh, there's the lab, right. Delivery. All right. <laughs> it has to wait for the object to finish moving first, before it'll let you do that. Makes sense. And that's not too useful to us. Alright, now... Hmm. Yeah, you could like, fall into this puzzle from above. <laughs> Where's our red emitter? Oh, it's over here. Okay. All right, just out of reach. Well, oh. 
isn't that interesting. Right, I can use this to hold down the button. Eh, a little bit finicky, but it works. All right. I think we want to deliver the connector on top of the queue, probably. That's the only way to work with the fan, anyway. Yeah. That's pretty much how it has to go, I think. Oh no! It has to go over there then. How are we gonna pull that off? Well, only one way to find out, I suppose. Yeah, this doesn't work through the bars. You can see it blinking on the right side of the screen, it, it includes both the connector and the box, but the, the preview... Looks like it's only showing the box, or maybe the connector's overlapping it somehow? I don't know, let's just try this and see what happens. Alright, now what? I guess we do this as before. Here's the thing. Oh! In the bottom center of the screen, it shows... Wait, what? Those icons are kind of weird? <laughs> I don't think the icons are supposed to work like that on the... <laughs> so don't look at the gold, look at the, uh, the blue above the... overlapping the barrier. That's, uh, that's quite strange, the behavior there. I'm not sure it's supposed to be working like that, but... Let's try it. Well, it works! The display is a little bit buggy, but it I works. I can't even get my brain to think like that. Oh! Insects. What can I do for you? Lots of options here. It makes me wonder why people always think they know better than nature. He was in charge of planning New Alexandria. It was his mistake that led to the disaster. After that, he retired from public affairs and dedicated himself to his studies. They've experienced a lot more hardship and tragedy than most of us. I think it's understandable that they choose to focus on their personal interests. You mean, am I unduly influenced by my experiences? Unable to imagine the better future Byron wanted because I'm too traumatized? Could be. But I'd like to think I'm a little more self-aware than that. I do. Although I prefer the term 
interactive fiction, it's better at capturing what this art form really is, storytelling, but with a completely different underlying structure. As a category, it's more equivalent to poetry or the novel, rather than, say, film. Anything else? Why do you ask? Just because I believe we don't need to expand and dominate everything doesn't mean I want us to go extinct. I know there are people who think that way, but if I care about other species going extinct, why wouldn't I care about this one? Seems irrational to me. Interesting. Many interesting characters in this game. The writing at least the writing team did at least a good job making the characters interesting. Anyway, let's get to puzzle eight. Step and release. Oh no. <laughs> Disables the other one. We need a jammer somewhere. Oh, oh no! <laughs> we do have a jammer up there. Oh, hey. It's got an icon for myself, that's funny. But why won't it include that as well, I wonder? Okay, now it's definitely inside. Okay, so it won't anti-grab itself, apparently. Interesting. And I can't grab it and ride the anti-grab at the same time. Huh. Are any others that I'm missing around here? Uh, I need that, don't I? But how do I get it? Excuse me? Behold, the levitation <laughs> without a fan. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, good. I still have air control at least. But jumping was not working there. So close. Oh! Duh. Why didn't I think of that sooner? There we go. Forgot this wall was here. Alright. Yeah, we need the jammer if we can do anything with that. So... Uh, what order do we need to do all this in, though? I think I need to swap this up here first. Maybe not, but I'm trying it. See what happens. Uh, yeah, if I need to then swap it with this. There we go.
Well, that's an odd direction for the jammer to be pointing. Uh, you do you, jammer. I'm not sure why you'd want to point that way, but sure. Ooh, but now what? need this right now, so I was right earlier. There we go. Now it's charged. Yay! And just like before, we need to go and swap these things back and forth. Hither and thither. the jammer anymore. So we can swap that out. And now, don't need the anti-grab. And this is still charged. Nice. We <laughs> Did it. get up there. Is there a way? My splashing to sinking with the music almost. Chances are looking low for getting up on top of whatever this is. Like, unless those anti-grab surfaces help with that. But I think they were only for following the spark, right? Yeah, I guess we just can't get up there. Doesn't seem like there's anything up there anyway. Alright. Well, let's head out of here, then. Or head to the lab, rather. I thought those were statues or something. Okay, I don't want to get stuck back there. There you are. Good. Inside this lab, there's a machine. As usual, I have no idea what it is. Some sort of generator, if I had to guess. When Byron got stuck in the system, it went haywire. It's currently outputting enough energy to power all of New Jerusalem twice. As you can imagine, that's causing quite a bit of interference. You go in there and you switch it off. Shouldn't be hard. <laughs> Alright. Just to double check. Yep, 8 out of 8, 2 out of 2, 2 out of 2. We're about to do the lab. What do we have here in research? Environmental observations by Yukut. This environment has been modified to allow life to spread. Most of the life forms can be found in other parts of the island as, as well, but some appear to be endemic to this region. It's possible they were genetically modified to be better able to survive here. There are some particularly gorgeous dragonflies that I cannot help but think they were deliberately designed to be beautiful. But maybe I'm making the same mistake our ancestors made, seeing intent where there is none. No, I think it's pretty clear from what we found that uh, Miranda bioengineered this area. To some degree, at least. Ooh, a thread called the Talos Principle in the Talos Principle 2. Digging through the archive, I was surprised to discover that there is a movie based on the Talos Principle, an international co-production written by Robert Harrison Blake, a pseudonym for an unknown screenwriter, and directed by a young Sergio Leone. Or Leon. It stars Peter Ustinov as Stratton of Stradir 
Stagira. Stagira. Eh, uh, Stagira. <laughs> I can't know how. I don't know how to say that name. Zero Mosto as his comedic sidekick, Nicomachus. And Angel Arma Aranda as the Ernest Amentus. It's not a realistic biography of Stratton, but a kind of sword and fantasy. Sorry, sword and scan, sword and sandal fantasy epic that culminates in Stratton building a replica of the mythological robot Talos to defeat the war crazed Spartans. That part is fun and surprisingly well done for its tiny budget. The movie also contains a number of fascinating dialogue scenes inspired by Stratton's work. Ustinova Stratton has a line I really liked. There are always hard times in human history, Amentus. Do you think we are the first to be besieged by enemies or to doubt the wisdom of our allies? But while yesterday is set in stone, a better tomorrow is always within our grasp. That's fascinating. Thank you for sharing. How weird that this film is not better known. It's what Trevor said in that audio file 1K found. Great art isn't always appreciated in its own time. It's not like people particularly love Stratton himself. We can appreciate it now. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if that's a real movie. It probably is, if they're talking about it like this. Alright. Let's get in here. Uh, that's supposed to be a cobweb? <laughs> what is it attached to? Uh, low graphic settings, most evidently, is what it's attached to. Oh, goodness. Wow, yeah, the, the screen gets all fuzzy when you get close to it. I don't know if you can see that in the, sh in the video, though. I don't know if the video encoding is good enough for you to see how the screen has got all these cross hatches on it now. Versus... Now when the screen is more clear. Isn't this curious? It's like stuff leaking out almost. Cannot access energy flow manager. Cannot load profile settings. Cannot initiate automatic shutdown. Connection lost. Emergency shutdown dialogue. Neomaster, warning! Output max parameter exceeds safety protocol 2C settings. Error, cannot adjust output max to correct setting. Access denied. Air automatic shutdown has been disabled by user. Air unknown user. Unknown script often detected. Load. Anthropology at Text Adventure. <laughs> oh boy, can we play a Text Adventure in um ten minutes? Written, designed, and programmed by Alex Sixteen. Pro Team Game Jam Fifth Edition. Adapt or die. <laughs> Based on. The <laughs> okay. You wake up in an impossible place, knowing nothing. You seem to be in a labyrinth of ancient crumbling walls. Beneath you is an altar of some kind, as if you were a sacrifice. The sky above you is, is a perfect cobalt blue, and you are startled by its beauty. You find that sh though you are shaped like a human being, and feel that your soul belongs to that storied people, you are made of bronze. You are a beautiful machine, crafted with love and care, and imbued with the power to choose. You have gained knowledge, the self. A cold wind blows through the ruins, and you know without knowing how that it is the wind from the kingdom of Artemis. It is the wind that brings with it whispers of mountains glimpsed across the stormy sea, and deep forests wreathed in fog, and the long-forgotten cities of your ancestors. Explore the labyrinth. You set out into the ruins, apprehensive but curious. There is a strange kind of beauty here. 
beauty of decay, you must be careful not to imbue too much of it. Or imbibe too much of it. Suddenly, an echoing voice speaks to you. <laughs> Emergency shutdown settings, access denied, it intones. Error. <laughs> this corruptible must put on incorruption. The sting of death is sin. What? Interesting. See, this is the thing about the choices. These, these choices are clearly integrated into the terminal. Like, this is not the usual choice system. Or maybe it is because it's part of our... our robot, our 1K's internal circuitry choices. Like, this is a display that we see inside of our own head, like our imagination or whatever. I don't know. Just something interesting. Because <laughs> this is like one of the first times we've had choices like this inside these terminals. Uh, corruption, corruption towards them. Leaving the lost children of Hephaestus behind you, you step out onto a vast plain under a setting sun. Night is falling now, and you can see the lights of distant fires on the slopes of Olympus, but you are not ready to ascend. Only once you have found all three sigils will the path to the divine flame be open. Path leads to the south, to the buried city. Another leads north to the Garden of the Hesperides. Let's go to the Buried City. The Buried City lies to the south. It was once a place of great wisdom. The philosophers of old strolled on its walkways, debating the nature and virtue of the soul. Now the sands of the desert have claimed its streets, and even its famed temple upon a hill is slowly eroding. A copper fox comes scurrying from the ruins. Its eyes are rubies, and a flame seems to flicker deep within them. How may I help you, the fox says, its voice ancient and wild. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I don't think we can do that yet. So we can either ask for a sigil, ask to learn more about the buried city, or ask about emergency shutdown. I can scroll back up quite far here. That's nice to know. Once you found all three sigils, yeah. They say that the city fell because its citizens were sinners, and so were struck down by Zeus. This seems unlikely to me, for Zeus does not believe in sin. The fox smiles, its alabaster teeth sharp and gleaming. We are supposed to earn the sigils. Oh, we don't have knowledge world, right? Or do we? You do not have this knowledge. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> Guess we have to go elsewhere first. It does, the fox says, but only because you choose to believe so. There is great power in that belief. You have gained a sigil, really? Okay, I didn't expect that. I thought we would have to leave and come back. Journey to the Garden of, of uh, Esperides. Your journey is interrupted by a frightful burned figure standing alone in the sands of the desert. Access denied, it screams. Error. <laughs> Fight or flee. Warning, output max parameter exceeds safety protocol 2C settings. Error cannot adjust output max to correct settings. Access denied. The nymphs lead you to a place where the crowns of the brass trees seem to grow together, forming a kind of chamber strangely reminiscent of a chapel. In the middle of this chamber grows a smaller tree made of bright blue steel, and upon this tree grows a single golden apple. And ask the nymphs about the apple, ask, uh, take the apple, ask the nymphs about their father, ask about emergency shutdown. <laughs> 
Some say that Heracles, when he freed our father Atlas from his burden, did not do so by taking his place, but by showing him that the celestial spheres did not need to be held up by anyone, neither titan, god, nor mortal. Then Atlas sat upon his mountain, gazing upon the stars, and wept. This apple they all say in unison, their eyes aglow, confers the gift of deathlessness and true wisdom. Many heroes, and not a few villains, have come to claim it, but all faltered in the final step, for you must know that deathlessness reveals the mortality of the world, and true wisdom is its unending folly. Who would take this burden upon themselves? <laughs> Beg them to let you have the apple. Punch a nymph. 5358. Explain that the world needs you to succeed. Knowledge world, which we don't have. Uh, say that you are strong enough to bear it. Knowledge self. Offer to trade part of yourself for the apple. Knowledge sacrifice. Well, we have this one. Let's see what this is. You speak wisely of yourself, and you are right, the nymphs say. But do not forget that you are human, and others must be bear this burden with you. You have gained a sigil. Journey to Olympus. Suddenly, the voice of the Sphinx, uh, corruption, her golden wings, her shadow cast. Uh, initiate an emergency shutdown. No, you must not do this, Pandora commands you. I have stopped you for a reason. If you complete your quest and ascend Olympus, everything will burn. And our options are error, point out that Pandora is destabilizing the whole system, throw the sigils at Pandora, error, and retry. Dora hesitates, then she sighs. You speak the truth, Cleature of Clay. Even I cannot use the flame wisely. Oh, I didn't even get to read the rest of what it said there. Oh, there it is. Access granted. Yep. Okay. The flame is not yours to wield, Creature of Clay. Touch it. And you will burn. What am I hearing outside right now? Oh, another demonstration of stuff. kind of... disruptors? That when you disrupt both sides of a barrier, it will deactivate it like a jammer would do? Interesting. Well, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!